and that is going to activate this G protein. And by that, what happens is once this binds, there's a little subunit of the G protein that falls off. Why? Because it's a protein with quaternary structure. Part of it is an individual polypeptide, and it can come off. What I just told you was is that when, when there's not, this isn't here, they have a strong attraction. When this is present, they have a weak attraction, so this falls off. But it has a stronger attraction at this point once this has changed shape to that. So it comes over here, and it goes right there. So I just activated, so this served, if you want to, as a cofactor or a coenzyme to this. And we just modulated or activated this enzyme here. Now this is called, this, this enzyme in general sense is called an amplifier enzyme. Because it will amplify the response. Specifically here, it is adenylyl cyclase. And adenylyl cyclase does this. Give me that. It causes the release of two inorganic phosphate ions, no big deal, and it causes the ring to covalently close on itself and it becomes a cyclically, cyclical structure. So it goes from being a linear structure to a... Does any of that really matter? No. But that's what it does. That's what that enzyme does. So what do you have now? What's the new thing that's present? We've got a couple... Of, those are always in the cytoplasm, right? But this... Mm -mm, that's not in the cytoplasm. So which one of these products is the second messenger? It's got to be that, right? Because that's the new thing that was produced. So cyclic AMP is now the second messenger. Okay, you all right with that? So cyclic AMP is my second messenger. Now, what does it do? A cascade. A cascade. Honestly, the exact answer is it depends. Depends on what this cell is and what the response is we're trying to get and other kinds of scenarios. But one thing that can certainly happen is that it will trigger the activation of other kinases in the cell. Kinases do what? Add it's phosphate to something, right? So it's going to phosphorylate a protein. And when it phosphorylates the protein, that activates the protein. And depending upon what that protein is, you get the response. This is the response. I don't care what it is. It, it could be a number of things. It could be a number of things. This, this second messenger system participates in lots of different kinds of cellular responses. It depends on the particular scenario. Okay. Question? For the G protein, do you need to know the, the subunits for the, the GS1? Nah, I would say yes, but I don't even know what that is. Yeah, you need to know, but I wouldn't know if you're right or wrong. Okay. <laughs> That's a good thing. It's been too long since I've had cell biology. Okay. So we're good with this. Now you also see why this amplifies the response, right? Because for every single molecule you get out here, this stays active, you can have multiple second messengers. Because you can have multiple second messengers, you can have multiple activated other enzymes in the body. They can give multiple responses, so it's just like this exponential thing. Uh, she told two friends, and he told two friends, and so on, and so on, and so on, right? So you get this big response for a little stimulus. Which also, by the way, is a characteristic of, ends of hormones and paracrines in general is that they work in small concentration. So you can have a small amount out here of that, and you can get a whole bunch of something happening inside of the cell. How do you stop, how do you stop this response? What has to go away first? The signal. Get rid of the signal. And then once you've got rid of the signal, you've got what? Back over here, that's inactive. Then you're going to have over time a small amount of CAMP, and this is going to kind of fizzle out. A lot of these responses are not really rapid on, rapid off, are they? They build, and then they receive. Kind of like waves, right? They build, and then they receive. Because we don't have a way, we got to just let time take its course here to get rid of this. 
We can break this down inside of the cell, and sometimes we do. Okay, it depends on the example. We can break this down outside, and sometimes we do. So I'll give you a for example. Um, uh, there are some examples where acetylcholine works similar to this as a G-protein coupled receptor. Acetylcholine is the most common neuro, um, most abundant. I think it is the most abundant neurotransmitter in the body. Um, it can work by a number of different ways, meaning that there are a number of different receptors for it. But one of them does involve a, a GPCR response. But guess what? There's an enzyme right here that breaks it down as soon as it works. So you release acetylcholine, it starts it, and then you break it down. So it's release it and it's gone. So you, that way you can really kind of fine tune how much of the signal's out there. But sometimes we've got to just let it diffuse away. Sometimes the cell that released it takes it back. It depends on the specific example.